I've just got home from work. My hair's a mess. My makeup's a mess. Let's do this. <laughs> okay, so I recently decided that I wanted to rewatch the movies in the MCU, the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Um, Endgame recently came out. Basically, over 10 years of movies have been building up to Endgame. Um, and so, with that now complete, it seems like a good time to go back and revisit all of the movies that built up to this moment. Uh, especially as a lot of the movies in the MCU, I actually haven't ever rewatched. I haven't seen them since they were. I'm going to be going through them chronologically by release date is the plan. I'm planning to watch each one and give my thoughts, etc, etc, etc. So that's the plan. So then we're starting with the first Marvel movie that was released in this chain and that is Iron Man. Now I always thought that it was a bit strange that Iron Man was the first movie because Iron Man was always a bit of a B-grade character. Um, from my own experience, I actually grew up reading uh, comics, particularly the original Avengers series was the, were the main comics I read as a kid. Like these bad boys have a few of these chronicles, which are beautiful. Um, so I was familiar with Iron Man through the Avengers comics, but he wasn't really a big deal in the comics world. He wasn't like one of the main guys, you know. Um, but then of course, some of the most well-known Marvel characters Marvel didn't actually own at the time, such as the X-Men and Spider-Man. So obviously, they couldn't start it off. But even though I'd always wondered about why Iron Man, it wasn't until this year, quite recently, that I actually decided to look into it. And I found out that apparently, it was basically because Iron Man would make the coolest toys. They went and surveyed a bunch of children, showed them some pictures of superheroes, told them their superpowers, abilities, etc. and asked which of these would you most like to play with as a toy and overwhelmingly Iron Man came back as the top response. So that's why we have Iron Man starting off our franchise. Um, personally, never been a huge fan of Iron Man, but I guess we'll get into that. So that's the background of the movie. It was released in 2008. Ooh, over a decade ago now, I was about 14 at the time. I remember um, Iron Man is one of the movies that I've never watched again since it was in cinemas. I remember when I first watched it with a group of friends as teenagers, I was bored. <laughs> that is the memory I have of watching the first Iron Man movie. So that's what we're going with. I've rewatched it now, over 10 years later as an adult. I'm gonna walk you through my thoughts basically as I watched it. That's what we're doing today. Cool. So, putting this movie on, I didn't really know what to expect. Obviously it's been over 10 years since I watched it. Wasn't a huge fan of it as a teenager. Never been a huge fan of Tony Stark throughout this franchise, even in more recent movies. Definitely not one of my favorites. So I wasn't really sure how I was gonna go watching this movie. I wasn't sure whether I'd hate it, like it, somewhere in between. But one thing I can say about this movie is I really like its opening. I think it sets it up really well. We jump straight in with our epic music. We've got Back in Black playing. I can get behind that. You also have the immediate setup kind of who Tony Stark is, namely that he never friggin' shuts up. And within four minutes, you're already straight into the action there's already been an explosion, Tony Stark's taken away, and whoosh, we're into this movie. So, thumbs up for the opening. It's exciting, establishes the movie well. Props to you, Bob. We then go straight in to a montage, which is done in an interesting way, in that basically we're getting this info dump, but it's an excused info dump, because we're getting it in the way of this montage of this man who's just won this award. So, you know, within the first five minutes of the movie, we already know what action we're going to get into. We then flash back to this montage um, and we already know, you know, exactly who Tony Stark is and what we can expect from this movie. I can say that watching this beginning of this movie, I had never hated Tony Stark more. I just, like, he's your typical rich, 
playboy, does what he wants, blah blah blah. And some of it's kind of cast off as funny. And like, he does other things throughout this movie where it's like we kind of warm to him, but at the same time, I don't feel like that excuses his behavior. And at no point throughout this series, as far as I can remember, is his behavior ever really criticized that much, other than maybe a few comments from Pepper. But, oh, I could not stand him at the beginning. Oh, we get this exchange early on where a reporter comes up to Tony Stark and he's kind of like, oh, should I engage with her? And a good guy, Happy, says, oh, she's cute. And so, of course, Tony Stark turns around and decides, oh, she's cute, so she's worth my time. And then proceeds to basically harass her for the next few minutes as she is trying to ask important questions and all he's saying is basically come back to my place and get naked. So that bothered me. And then there's the whole fact that even like the women in this movie criticize the other women and it's just so unhealthy. Like there's this suggestion that Pepper says something about taking out the trash when she's escorting the woman out of Tony's house the next morning. And I'm assuming that that's what she means by that. And I just, can we, can we just not? I just, I don't know. Okay, moving on. Um, oh, there's also the fact that he just, like, I cannot stand when people put down, not put down, I cannot stand when people kind of try to put women in their place by using words like darling or honey. And it's exactly what Tony Stark's doing at this beginning of this movie. And I just, it just, ah, uh, why? Why does he have to be that person, honestly? I've got some notes here that I don't understand. In capital letters, I've written three hours. I only watched this movie a few days ago and I already can't remember what that's referencing. I do have some interesting points in here, like, is it better to be feared or respected is something that's said. Um, obviously, at the beginning of this movie, Tony Stark's in charge of this industry um, that sells weapons, etc, etc. That's their main profit margin. And then later on in this movie, he changes his mind on that. Again, this redeeming character arc doesn't really excuse the rest of his behaviors, but I digress. Welcome, the most famous mass murderer in the history of America. That's what our guy who has captured Tony Stark says to him. It doesn't look anything like the picture. Ah, all right. Basically, Tony Stark, we've, Tony, we've come back to the present moment. Tony Stark's been captured. They want him to build this um, intense weapon that he's been demonstrating to, to the American troops or whatever. And these, this dangerous um, extremist group wants it. And so they basically give him all the materials he wants, put him in a room, and they've just been monitoring him with a camera. You know, it's been a while that he's been there and nobody's really checked on him. And then you see this conversation and the guy's like, doesn't look like the picture. Oh, uh, maybe, maybe it's a modified version. <laughs> of course, then he is kind of caught out to the extent of they go in there and say, you know, if this isn't done in the next day or two, I'm gonna kill someone or, I don't know. Look, I will say this movie is an interesting, enjoyable watch. Definitely fun to look at with all its explosions and everything. I just, I have some mixed feelings about it. Oh, so then we are just in time. Tony has finished this robot suit he's making, which harkens back to like our original Avengers. This is volume one and it's still got a newer looking Iron Man on it. Anyway, so he builds this, he comes out and he looks like a friggin' something from a sci-fi horror film, basically. And it's even like a few of these scenes are almost kind of set like that with all the, the guys there freaking out about him. So for a few minutes, it feels like you're watching a sci-fi horror, which I can get behind. Cool. Oh yeah, so Tony Stark's captured um, after this explosion. The explosion puts, the explosion ends up splintering off and he's got this these shards stuck inside him that if there isn't a magnet pulling at them, they're 
going to get into his heart and kill him basically. So he constantly has to wear this magnet on his chest to keep that from happening and that's our centerpiece basically of our Iron Man. Except in our MCU obviously we've got a little, it's very glowy. So we have this whole scene of Tony Stark escaping. We also have Yezrin who's the guy who's been helping him. I think it's Yezrin. Um, but of course he dies a dramatic death. Don't waste your life, says Yezrin as he dies. So then we get to another one of these scenes which visually pretty cool. We've got our death robot steps out. There's all these guys shooting at him, doing nothing. Tony goes, my turn. And then all of a sudden, whoosh, we've got friggin' flamethrowers shooting out of his arms, which visually looks cool. When you think about it, it's actually friggin' horrific. Like, I don't care what these guys have done. I'm not sure anyone deserves death by being burned alive. Just fire everywhere. There's people running around on fire. It's, it's terrifying. Really, it's terrifying. So we find out that we find out that Tony Stark's been in captivity for three months. Um, and the first thing he wants to do when he gets back is he wants a damn cheeseburger, which good on him. I'd be right there with you. We also get our first appearance of Col Colson from, uh, the sh what, what is it? What's the acronym for SHIELD? The Strategic Homeland something something or other. I don't remember. They use the full name until the very end when Colson's like, you can just call it SHIELD. But Tony Stark's decided to host a press conference after he gets back. He gets his cheeseburger. He decides to sit on the ground eating his cheeseburger in at the front of this press conference <laughs> like all right you do you man and he announces that he wants to shut down the weapons department of Stark Industries basically so good on you still a bit of a playboy douche but at least you want to do the right thing by the world and don't want to be sending out these things that can be used to kill millions of people Good on ya! You did something right! We have the scene where he has to replace and upgrade the thing in his chest. And he gets Pepper to come help him. And Pepper's basically horrified and like, never get, make me do something like that again. And Tony's like, I don't have anyone but you. Tony, uh, is using the suit to fly for the first time. Kind of wobbly going around the, the room. This moment, I basically... I was basically just thinking, this movie has some cool things about it, but ultimately it's just like a power fantasy. Like that's all Iron Man is. It's a power fantasy, particularly like a male power fantasy. Like, I don't know if you came here for that kind of analysis and I'm not gonna get too much into it, but that was just a thought I had. I do have this moment where Tony opens up a box that Pepper's left for him and it's his old heart piece and she's put on it uh, proof that Tony Stark has a heart. That was kind of nice. Um, we have a lot of foreshadowing in this movie, which you would expect from the start of such a massive franchise where all the movies are connected. I'm, I don't actually remember. I think it was, I'm assuming this was a conversation between Jarvis and Tony um, and you know, Tony goes up in the suit. His suit ices up because he's gone too high up, which also foreshadows a moment later in that movie but to a grander scheme I think Jarvis says something about if you ever plan to visit other planets you know you're gonna have to upgrade the suit or whatever which we've got the initial render of the Iron Man suit is all gold which one of the first one of the early Iron Man suits in the comics was all gold so that was kind of neat but then he decided that he wanted to add some red in there Oh, we've got our Stan Lee cameo. Our first MCU Stan Lee cameo. Stan Lee. Tony walks past him on like a red carpet or something. He's got a, a dressing gown type thing on and Tony's like, look great, Hef. He's got all these women around him, etc. Has anyone ever seen all the theories about how all Stan Lee's cameos are connected and that he's one character traveling throughout the universe? I've never read too far into it, but I've seen them before. Is that a thing? Does pe do people know more about that? 
I don't know. I just think they're little fun little bits. Oh, we've got this moment between Tony and Pepper where Pepper says something like, I don't think you could tie your shoes without me. Yeah, probably. Tony is useless. I mean, for a really, you know, smart, powerful guy, like, what was it? He doesn't even know his social security number or something. <laughs> like, boy, boy. Ugh. <laughs> I've written frickin' Obi. I mean, I did actually, it's been over 10 years since I've seen this movie, so I actually didn't remember it like at all, especially since I don't think I paid much attention to it in the cinema at the time. Um, I remember my, my friends and I mucking around. But, so I didn't actually know exactly what happened, but I could see it coming. Like, you could so see it coming, but I still wrote frickin' Obi. Um, we have Pepper at one point saying, you're all I have too, you know. Definitely not something gonna go on there. That's right, there's this moment which we come back to later where they dance or something and Pepper's like, you know, this is weird, you can't be dancing with me, what will people think, blah 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 blah, and then they go up to the roof and Tony goes to get them drinks and then he just never comes back. <laughs> oh man. More foreshadowing near the end of this movie. Um, Rhodey comes in, I can't remember exactly what he was doing there, but Rhodey's there, Tony goes off in his suit, and there's another suit sitting there, and Rhodey's just like, next time, baby. <laughs> so, we get to the end of the movie, and S.H.I.E.L.D. have concocted this story about exactly what happened, and how they're going to cover it up. Tony Stark gets out there in front of the, the press conference, and in true arrogant Tony Stark fashion, he decides, you know what, screw all that, and just announces to the press, I am Iron Man. <laughs> End movie. <laughs> mate, mate. <laughs> and this is how we set up the Marvel Cinematic Universe. <laughs> I am Iron Man, cue music. We get our after credits scene, and we have Nick Fury making his appearance. Nick says, um, you think you're the only superhero? You're part of a larger universe. You just don't know it yet. Larger universe, eh? I'm here to talk to you about the Avengers Initiative. And so there was our beginning of something great. I think I have, I have a few little notes here at the end about what I thought overall. Visually, this movie looks really cool. Thumbs up for visuals. They're great. Pepper Potts is a gem. Pepper Potts is the gem of this movie. I, I mean, you know, it took us a decade to get a Marvel movie with a female lead, but I guess at least some of the female characters we have aren't like pushovers. Like we've got some, we've got some interesting characters in there, even if they have to be on the sidelines. Oh, warmed to Stark by the end. So I started this movie absolutely hating Tony Stark. By the end, I've warmed to him a little. Still never gonna call him one of my favorite Avengers. Like, not gonna happen. Take it or leave it. In many ways, he's still a bit of a douche. I won't back down for that, I'm sorry. Um, yeah, still a bit of an arrogant douche. That is my last note on this movie. <laughs> Look, Iron Man, Iron Man's a fun movie. It is a fun movie and I definitely wasn't bored by it, um, even if my teenage self apparently was. It's a fun movie, it looks cool, it's important in the way it sets up our Marvel Universe um, and how everything's connected from there. So, look, it's a good movie, not without its problems, but there it is. That's the beginning of our Marvel Universe. So, why am I doing this? How long am I going to do this? Who thinks that I'm going to quit before I get through all the movies? remains to be seen.